So this is uh, my homemade dust collector, or actually what I'm going to be showing is a couple fittings that I've posted up on uh, Thingverse, and also, uh, oh, what do you call this, centrifugal separators, actually the part that I made, the uh, the vacuum part is just a com uh, commercially made. It, I got this from Harbor Freight. Uh, I don't know, I think it was probably about 130 I spent on this. It comes with a bag that goes on the outlet uh, to collect, and you're supposed to just hook up to it, and all the shit goes right through it. Uh, but I really don't like doing it that way. You get a, you know, the bag is kind of a temporary setup as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and I don't like having all the stuff blow right through. So with the separator, you only get very fine, fine particulates that go through here. And eventually I'm going to plumb this up. I'm going to relocate this and it'll actually exit through the wall. Uh, but even like this, the amount of particulates that come out is not very much. The separator gets all the heavy stuff out and even a lot of the fines. Uh, so let me pull the top on this. It's just it's a 55 gallon barrel. I believe that's the 55. See that at 35. Uh, and I've taken a piece of plywood, cut a circle that fits in the rim, and pull this out. I'll show you what's inside. And this is just really simple. Uh, just you got a grommet in the middle that your uh, vacuum side goes on. Uh, the side going to the the uh, the blower assembly, a vacuum assembly. Uh, and then on the inlet, I've got an elbow here, and the elbow is set up to do the swirl. It just runs around the rim of the uh, the drum and causes a circular motion to go around as it goes down, and that keeps all the particulates flung out to the edge, and the lighter air will come up through the center as it exits and steadies out. Uh, the gasket on here, this is a simple trick I've done for years on a lot of things. This is silicone, uh, and what I do is, yeah, well, if you look at the, the hole that I made here, I left a little lip on there, I don't know, roughly two inches, it doesn't have to be perfect here. Uh, and then what I do is I lay toilet paper uh, over the edge of that. And you want specifically, you want toilet paper, because you want it to be able to be, to be thin and to degrade. Uh, paper towel just doesn't dissolve quick enough and it's it's too thick. So once you do that, take on your plywood and run a rim of a bead of silicone around the edge. Uh, it, make a nice generous thick bead around there, maybe even two, it, so that it merges. And set it down over the toilet paper, press it down. Uh, so that it all spreads out nice and flat, and let it sit and harden. Give it, you know, 12 hours or so overnight, and then pick it up. And then you can just kind of any of the, the real loose toilet paper. You don't even have to because it's so thin. I mean, I've still got some on here, uh, but that makes a nice, reasonably airtight seal. Uh, it works great for this. I've done it for other things. I've done it on my boat for the uh, for the hatches. Uh, I've got a, a hatch up front where I pull my sails out, uh, and that used to leak really bad. They just had foam seal in there, and the foam was deteriorating. And I did this, and I've never had a problem. And I I, uh, I use that in some pretty rough water at sometimes. I really get a lot of spray up there. And I've never had a problem with the water coming in through the hack since I've done this. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to show a clip later of this in, in use, just using it, uh, vacuum, uh, with using, uh, this is just shop vac attachments, the large size. Uh, it worked good with the large size. You don't really work that great with the small stuff. Uh, I do use the one and a quarter for like my little belt sander here and the uh, the saw, uh, but you don't get the kind of suction with this that you do with uh, a regular vacuum. Uh, the vacuum head is designed for large volume, so these this is a three inch hose on here. At three inches, it's, it really starts to draw a good vacuum. 
and that's actually six inch, uh, and it, it, that it, it draws it. it. It draws a massive vacuum through there. Uh, what I sometimes what I'll use that for is I'll set this. I used to have it set up to blow out the window, and if I do welding in here, I use that to extract fumes from the welding, and it works really good with that too. Uh, so these things are really, they're, they're designed for high volume, not so much for high vacuum. But it's there, it's enough. I mean, if you've got enough airflow going through there, it'll pick up the big chips. Uh, in the video, you'll see I, I just dumped a bunch of uh, wood chips from uh, chopping wood down there, and it gobbled that right up. Uh, for the sanders, it's light dust, so it's, it's not a particularly high uh, vacuum. It's still, it's enough to draw that out. It will keep it, it uh, from plugging up and pull it out. Same with the saw. Uh, it won't pull the big chunks out, like if you cut a corner and it drops through, it may not get that. Uh, but the dust, it will keep the dust pulled out. Uh, and on the saw, most of that, I've got three inch running to that. Uh, I'll post some still photos of that set up as well. Uh, and that, that has worked great because the only little bit of one and a quarter on there is right by the elbow there. Uh, and it's getting enough airflow through there. It, it works quite well. I've only got a little bit of dust that gets left on the table. And when I'm all done, uh, I just unplug it and use it as just a, a freehand and pick up anything that got left behind.